Hello friends, this is Dr. Sangeet and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patshala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way. And today's topic we are going to talk about a fluid filled sac which is the cyst. So without further ado, let's get started. And welcome back to one of the 10 in 10 series where we cover each topic under 10 headings in 10 minutes. And today's topic we are going to talk about the radicular cyst or the apical periodontal cyst. So this is a basically cyst as the name suggests apical periodontal cyst that will be in a non-vital teeth. So when there is a pulpal inflammation, pulpal infection after that when we get any cyst development that is the radicular or the periodontal cyst so before we get started make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our future videos so talking about the radicular cyst also known as apical periodontal cyst also known as the dental root end cyst as the name suggests first point like every like always the first point is taken from the name so apical it is going to be present at the root apices so this is going to be present at the root apices. Then there is a periodontal cyst. That means it is going to involve the PDL, right? So this is a kind of cyst which is actually present at the root end and after any pulpal inflammation is there. So whenever the tooth is non-vital, non-vital teeth means the tooth is dead. That means pulp C. Pulp is the actual part of the tooth which has the nerves, which has blood vessels. So it is the living part. What happens when there is an infection which is invaded into the pulp? So when we know that infection is invaded into the pulp, that means there is going to be destruction of blood vessels and the nerves. So what happens? The tooth becomes non-vital. So let's not just discuss about, let's not just discuss about the non-vital teeth. Let's just discuss about the radicular cyst. So what happens? If any infected teeth is there, if there is a tooth fracture or suppose if there is any improper restoration which is leading to a non-vital teeth, then there are high chances that it may develop into the radicular cyst. How it may develop into the radicular cyst? So we have pathogenesis is divided into four phases. We have four phases, initiation, proliferation, cystification and enlargement, cyst enlargement. So phase of initiation, that means how the cyst is made, how the cyst is initiated. So it is actually developed from the infection, bacterial infection which is coming from the pulp or the necrotic. So it is an inflammatory effect because of the inflammation, pulpal inflammation, because of this necrosis, there is initiation of the cyst. So how that will cover in the phase of proliferation, how this proliferates. So basically it says that there is a formation of a large mass in the periapical area. So there is a large mass of the epithelial cells which is around the periapical area of a infected teeth. So what happens there is a large, large mass which is developed. Now they, we have two theories and before that this there is a proliferation of cells which occur. So uh, phase of proliferation means there is multiplication of cells because there is an increase in the carbon dioxide tension, decrease in the oxygen tension, decrease in the pH, acidic pH. So pulpal uh, necrotic products and so many factors it causes proliferation of cells. Now that when the cells are multiplied near to the periapical area. So they, there is cyst formation. How the cyst forms? The, we have two theories or two concepts. First one is when the cyst is developing from the abscess. So what happens? There is an abscess cavity which is formed in the connective tissue and this act, abscess cavity as you can see from the green color it is lined with the epithelial cells. Now the, the, this is the one concept. The another one concept is that since we have talked about the proliferation of cells so what happens there is a lot of cells proliferated near to the periapical area. So what happens because there is no supply uh, of nutrition in the center. So these cells in the center they actually die they get necrosed and a cyst is formed. So this is how there is a cystification phase of cyst formation. Say a phase of enlargement is now after the cyst is formed, it get enlarged or bigger in the size. This can be because of the enzyme collagenase, bone resorbing factor like PGE2, 
like that or if there is any osmotic tension of the cystic fluid so all these things will create the enlargement of the cyst so a cyst will become enlarged then next comes when the tooth get infected there is a pulpal necrosis then after the pulpal necrosis there is an inflammation in the periapical area now this inflammation in the periapical area it stimulates the cell rest of melasses so which is the actually cell which is involved in the radicular cyst this you have to remember so cell rest of melas are the actual cells which stimulate the cyst formation so because of this there is a formation of periapical granuloma so because of this there is a multiplication of or proliferation of cells in the periapical area so what happens the inner epithelium of the granuloma or the mass of epithelial cells the inner epithelium or the uh, center cells they undergo necrosis and there is a formation of the radicular cyst so this is how actually radicular cyst is formed so coming to dem demographics so basically it affects third fourth and fifth decade of life because the caries rate is high teeth are non vital so this is most common among males then maxilla see till now we have covered till now we have covered okc and dentigrous cyst in that the mandible was affected more but in case of radicular cyst the maxilla is affected more so this case i must have written the maxilla is affected more now the in this specific feature typical feature of a radicular cyst is that tooth is going to be the non vital teeth because we are talking about periapical pulpal because of this infection so there is going to be the dead teeth is going to be non vital teeth and usually it is asymptomatic but if we are talking about large lesions what happens when the cyst becomes enlarged so there is a slow enlarging growth which will be there will be swelling at the jaw expansion there will be expansion distortion of the cortical plates and there may be because of that pathological fracture that is usual in case of every cyst till now that we have studied now what happens there is going to be periapical radiolucency at the apex right half pear shape so this this radiolucency if we are talking about you must be asking me the difference between abscess and the cyst because periapical abscess also will have the radiolucency but the difference is that the size is somewhere close to 1.5 cm in diameter like more than 1.5 cm but it will always be less than 3 cm so the main difference is that the well defined outline will be there with a thin hyperostotic border if you look at the periapical radiolucency in case of abscess it is very ill defined right so it will be like this but what about the radicular cyst so there is going to be a well defined like this this is going to be a well defined borders and also there will be like um, there will be radio opacity line of radio opacity as we talk about in the cyst like thin hyperostotic borders so the border of the cyst is going to be hyperostotic so like this it will be look like this is the difference between a radiographically the radicular cyst and any abscess so if we talk about histopathological the epithelium is non keratinized stratified squamous now this diagram is not taken from any book so please do not make this diagram i have made this diagram to make you understand all these bodies which are present so epithelium is non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium thickness is 6 to 20 layers and sometimes uh, this epithelium lining because of inflammation it may dis discontinue disrupt anywhere so what we are talking about in the epithelium is the arcading pattern of the epithelium now why is this pattern so instead of epithelium proliferating into sheets it is not proliferating into sheets arcading pattern is when it is proliferating the epithelial cells are proliferating in different planes suppose one layer is going like this one layer is going like this another layer is going like this so there is a arcading pattern so that is the reason a mass is formed rather than the sheets of epithelium there are mass or cluster of epithelium so the core of connective tissue also extend into the epithelium mass from all the directions so connective tissue we have three bodies we have rustin bodies cholesterol clefts and the russell bodies now rustin bodies rustin body are the hyaline bodies are the eosinophilic hyaline bodies as you can see they are crescent shape so that is like a half moon shape so crescent shape or a hairpin uh, shape we can say so it is usually found in the epithelial lining but again it may be found in the connective tissue also but if you can see they are more in the epithelial lining 
देन नेक्स्ट कम्स द कोलेस्ट्रॉल क्लेफ्ट सो कोलेस्ट्रॉल क्लेफ्ट आर बोथ प्रेजेंट इन द एपिथेलियल लाइनिंग आल्सो इन द कनेक्टिव टिश्यू आल्सो सो इफ यू लुक एट दीज आर द क्लेफ्ट लाइक स्पेसेस बेसिकली यू कैन सी देयर आर स्पेसेस प्रेजेंट बिटवीन दीज क्लेफ्ट्स सो दीज आर द बेसिकली डिसइंटीग्रेटेड आरबीसीज जस्ट डिस्ट्रॉयड आरबीसी सो दीज क्लेफ्ट आर एयर फिल्ड डिस्ट्रॉयड आरबीसी वी कैन से व्हिच क्रिस्टलाइजेस इन द टिश्यू ड्यूरिंग द टिश्यू प्रोसेसिंग so next comes the russell bodies russell bodies are nothing but the plasma cells so as you can see i have i don't know how the russell bodies look like i have drawn it on my own so this is the red color so i have made plasma cell along with the immunoglobulins so the plasma cell surrounded by the immuno immunoglobulin are a russell bodies okay so these are the three bodies which are present in the connective tissue uh, resten bodies cholesterol cleft and the russell body characteristic feature of the radicular cyst also there will be dense inflammatory infiltrate will be present in the connective tissue so now that we are talking about the ras what happens when you extract the tooth and the cyst is present still in the jaw so that is called the residual cyst okay then how do we treat it if very small cyst is there then we can do the root canal treatment large cyst is there then always we do the enucleation and the mass opalization so guys this is about the radicular cyst or the apical periodontal cyst or dental root end cyst i hope that you guys have liked the video so if you have liked the video enjoyed the video then give it a thumbs up and also you can comment in the comment section below and there is a link in the description below to support me on patreon as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys and to make free no to you and so guys till then keep reading keep learning take care stay motivated i will see you soon guys in the next video